Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about the Project Input Transformer in Cubase. But before we start, are you looking for something more complete in your online search for answers? Something that brings you all the tips, but then fills in all that missing space around them? Something that is built from the ground up with the purpose of removing confusion and all those other negative things that you experience in the winding road of endless information? Presenting the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. This is a series of videos that will help move you along the path from wherever you are now to a higher level of knowledge and understanding. The whole concept is based on taking the vast majority of information that's available in the manuals of some of your favorite programs like Cubase or WaveLab or many others that are in the works and then presents them to you in a fresh new way. All these videos are laid out like the manual. The subjects are titled like the manual. The information is searchable like the manual. All with one gigantic difference. Everything is demonstrated in real-time situations. It gives you examples and processes to learn and use all the information. And you're going to see, just like so many have done already, it's literally a treasure chest of hidden and rarely explained features and functions, all leading you step by step from the beginning to end, empowering you with a new language set and the programs you may have already been using for years, or even if you're just getting started. So if this sounds interesting to you, come and be part of a clear path to a better way to learn. Click on the link below to get access, and I will see you on the inside. All right, let's get started. So the Project Input Transformer. It basically allows you to play something on your MIDI keyboard and affect something else differently. Maybe you're going to move your modulation wheel, but you want it to affect the pitch. Maybe you're going to move the pitch, and you want it to affect the modulation, or any number of a million different combinations of things like that. Right now, we're looking at the Project Input Transformer. Let's back out of this for a second. There's a couple ways to get to this. Let's look at this option. If I have a track down here, and I go over to my track settings, as I come down the middle of the inspector, there's an option here that says the Input Transformer. If I look at this drop-down list, I have the option to have None, or I can turn it into a project or a track transformer. If it's on the project, then it's going to affect everything MIDI in the project. If I move it to track, it's only going to affect MIDI data on this particular track. Once you make a choice and turn this on, you also have the option to say open the panel. And when you open the panel, here's where you begin making your choices. At the very top of the list, you have the option to pick presets. With these kind of things, your presets are really your first line of attack. If you can learn to manipulate some of your presets, see how they're basically laid out, that's when you can start moving on to the next level of actually creating these things. When you hit a preset, you have the option to hit the plus or the minus button here to open or close these different categories. And as you go down the list, you have a long list of optional presets. Pick a preset from the list. For example, I'm going to go to this one that says controller filtering and filter out the volume and the pan. That enters something into this field that tells me it's going to filter out the volume and the pan. If I want to write my own description, I can. But now as I look down here in this area that says the event target filters, it has created this equation that kind of walks you through exactly what it's going to do. And when you're reading these equations, start from the top left, you move straight across, then you go down to the next line, and again you go straight across, and you keep going that way until the equation ends. So in this example it says the type is equal to, tells you it's a controller, you get to the end and it says and, telling you there's more to the story. It moves down to MIDI controller number is equal to 7 and... Moving on, MIDI controller is equal to 10. So this tells you how everything is going to lay out. As you get to the bottom, if there's something that's going to change, it's going to be in this area. In this case, they bypassed this first area and moved right on to the very end where you have a drop down that says, in this case, filter or transform. If it's on the filter option, it's basically telling you it's going to stop it or block it or do something to it. It's going to filter it out. If you go to the transform option, then it's going to make some kind of change to it. If all your notes are MIDI C3, and you want to transform them to MIDI C4, that's where you get these transform options. We're going to break a few of these down and see how it all works. Another option for opening up the input transformer, go up to the project menu. As you come down, there's an option that says project input transformer. Click on that, and that'll bring you to the panel as well. You can resize this lower area if you need more room. Anytime you load a preset, I go to this panel, and I pick out a preset. It shows the name of the preset. And you have to have this edit button on over here on the right to actually do anything to it. If you change to these other edit buttons, that edits whatever preset you have in that area. Back on this original one, the minute I make any changes to it, if I click on something, change a value, it puts a little asterisk by the name. If I hit that drop down list again, now it puts an extra option here that says save changes as a preset. If I click on that, it opens up the user preset folder and I can give it a name and save it. If you hit this drop down list, you have an option at the bottom that says show the user preset location. This will open up a folder on your hard drive that's located in your documents called the Steinberg folder. 
and inside of that it has user presets for the input transformer. Typically as you upgrade versions of Cubase, when you hit this down arrow and it shows the user presets, it'll also show you a separate folder saying earlier presets, meaning that it's pulled presets from your other versions. If I go back up to the preset window, pick a preset out of here, of course it fills in with all this various information of what it's going to do. If I want to add extra commands, I can go here and I can hit insert, keeps typing in extra commands. This list will grow longer. Same thing down the actions. I can hit insert. These various equations will continue to grow. I can also hit remove and it takes those commands out of there in both the transform and this target filter area. And if I've just gotten carried away and it's a mess and I don't know what I've done, I can go up to the preset area and I can type in initial INIT and there's a factory preset called initial that resets everything back to zero. If we go back to an initial transformer for a second and we go to the event target filter and hit insert, get our basic equation a bunch of fields already filled in. If we click on any of these categories, for example, this first one that says filter target, right now it says type is, you get all these options. Value one, value two, channel, type, value three, and the last event. This is where the water becomes a little bit murky because there are meanings to these value ones and value twos that are not always clearly posted. It is written in the manual, documented, and if you really want an understanding of using this, this is the one time I would say check out the manual list under your MIDI event values. Let me give you a short example to get you started. If I go ahead and hit insert one more time, it puts an exact copy of the same equation. In the first line, we're dealing with note values, and that's what's listed under this parameter one. I click this, I can see I have choices between note and poly pressure and controller, program change, aftertouch, pitch brand, and system exclusive. Depending on what event you choose here, for example, is it note? Is it going to be a controller? That's what's going to affect when we go to this next line. We start getting these things that say value one, value two, and value three. They're actually going to change as to what they correspond to. Again, let me give you an example. Right now, if I leave this on note, and I go back to this first filter target, and I click on it, and I say value one, it says pitch. And it's going to look for various pitches of the notes. If I go to value two, it changes to velocity. And if I go to value three, it changes to off velocities. The minute I change this event to say the controller, I come back here and hit value one again. Now it says MIDI controller number. A minute ago, value one said pitch. But when I'm on controller, value one says MIDI controller number. So again, these value one, value twos, these change depending on whatever event they're referring to. And there's a long list in the manual that tells specifically what they are. It would be nice if every one of them was automatically listed, but it's not. If you go to start creating your own equation, it would be very easy to be lost in what is value three or value two or what you're actually looking for. Another thing to be aware of when you're working with this, we come down in this event transform action area. As long as the bottom right is set to transform, again, we can add more of these filter equations. But if this bottom area changes to filter, these filter equations gray out and you can't add any of them. Depending on what you set in the filter target area, as we said, we have these various choices of value one, value two, channel type, value three, and last event. Depending on what I've chosen here, when I go to the condition option, I'm going to get some choices there. And these choices are going to change. For example, if I hit the type, I go over to condition, I only have equal, unequal, or all types. But if I go to value one, now I have equal, unequal, bigger, bigger or equal, just a whole bunch of other stuff. So one thing you'll want to do to get familiar with this, click one of the filter targets, and then go over to the condition and see what options appear. Click a different filter target and see what options appear under the condition you'll begin to understand how some of these things are set up. In order to put in these target filters and remove them, you first have to make sure this very first module is activated. If it's not checked, there's no option to add or remove these target filters. Also, if you don't hit the edit button, these target filters won't be in view to edit as well. So the basic flow, if you're gonna set one of these up yourself, start by clicking on a module, go over and hit the edit button, come down and hit the insert button. At that point, pick a filter target out of here, go to the condition column and pick your condition, and then go to your parameter, and pick the parameter that you want to affect. If you understand that, you have the basic concept of how this begins. So when you call up a preset, you can examine it from that point of view. For example, let's take a preset. Once I put the preset in, I hit the edit button, then I can come down and look, what's the first event target filter? In this case, it says type is. I could look at that and change it if I needed to. I can go to the condition, it says equal. I could change that if I needed to. And then I can go to parameter one, and I could look at that and change it if I needed to. And that gives me some idea of how this thing is beginning and what the flow is through the conditions. We can see in this example that there's multiple filter lines. 
if I go back to my initial setting, and let's say I was to set up something like that. Once again, I would check a module. I'd activate the edit button. At this point, I would come down and hit three of these insert lines. I would come back to the beginning where it says filter target, choose my target, come to my condition and choose my condition, go to my parameter and choose my parameter. And then I would notice at the end that it says bool and it says the word and. If I clicked on this, it changes to the word or. You have this option of doing and, and you have the option to hit or. And means that it's going to have to have the next line as well. Or is telling you that it's going to have to have this condition or the next condition. Either one has to be in place, but not necessarily both of them. And it moves on down the line like that. You go to the next filter line and the next filter line. So now if we go back to a preset again and we examine that same preset we had a second ago, now we have some idea what we're really looking at here. We have the preset in the slot. We have the edit button on. We have our first filter target in place, meeting a certain amount of conditions. At the end, it says and, which means it moves on to the next filter target line. And then it has a list of conditions here that it has to meet. And when it reaches the end of this, in this case, it says and again. So it moves on to the next line and it continues doing that until it executes every one of these lines. So let me give you one basic example of something you can try as you get familiar with this. I'm going to go up and make sure I have initial in here, clearing everything out. I'm going to go to the target filters and I'm going to say insert. And right now it says the type is equal to a note. If I go to this filter target area and I change it to value one, it actually goes over to the parameter and changes it to C sharp two. You can't see my hands on my keyboard, but if I click on this parameter, and I hit a note on my keyboard, in this case I hit E1, and it filled in E1, and it played the note when I hit it. But down here on the right it says filter. If I hit E1 again, which I'm now hitting, it makes no sound, because it now filters out E1. If I go to the note below it, D1, it plays it for a second, but the next time I hit it, it's now filtered out even though I'm hitting it. Alright, let's do a few examples to get our feet wet here. First of all, I'm going to go to the MIDI channel that I'm working on. Go to the MIDI insert option. And we have a MIDI insert called MIDI monitor. I'm going to click that. And this allows me to see when I hit a key on my keyboard, what kind of MIDI data is happening. Right now I have it set to read notes. I'm going to hit a note on my keyboard. And when I do, it shows me the note on and it shows me when I release the note. If I hit it again, again it shows me what happens when I push the note and when I let go of it. I'm going to clear this out. Let's go to one of our presets. I'll put one in here. So I have to check the box. I'll look in the factory preset option. I'm going to go to controller filtering. I'm going to go to filter after touch. Now I don't want to do after touch because I'm seeing notes over here. I'm going to hit the note again. Again, I can see the notes showing here. What I'm going to tell this to do is filter out the notes. So a couple things when I look at this preset. Look at the very bottom right and see it's set to filter, which is telling me it's going to block something, whatever value I put in here. Right now it's after touch, but if I hit this parameter one, change it from after touch to note, leaving everything else the same. I'm now hitting a note on my keyboard. It is no longer sending any note data. The MIDI monitor is not seeing anything because even though I'm hitting a note, this input transformer is blocking it out. Now if I want to bypass that and I go up and hit this checkbox, and then I start hitting notes again, immediately they start showing up. So this can turn on or off whatever you're using and allow you to compare the results. But just with a simple knowledge of knowing how to change some basic fields in the columns here, you can take whatever the basic preset is and alter it quickly to whatever it is you're trying to do. Many times you want to take a controller and send that to something completely different. On this string part that I have, I'm taking the modulation wheel on my keyboard and moving it up and down, which kind of acts as a volume control. But maybe my modulation wheel isn't working properly or I need to change to some other controller for some reason. Let's say I take the pitch bend. I'm moving the pitch bend wheel and it's doing nothing because this string part doesn't react to pitch bend. Let's say I want to use that pitch bend wheel to control the modulation. If I go to my note expressions, look at my list of expression controllers, I can see that CC1 is modulation. It means when I move my modulation wheel, I'm sending the CC1 controller information. But let's say I want my pitch bend to do that. So if I go back over, turn my input transformer, open the panel up, get set it up from scratch, but let's just go ahead and use a preset since we're learning our way around here. And one of the presets they have in place here is to change the pitch bend to MIDI controller one, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna click on that and let's look at all the different things they gave us. In the event target filters, they said that the type is equal to pitch bend. Well, now we know it's gonna take whatever happens on my pitch bend and it's gonna send it through to the transform action area and it's gonna send it to the fixed value of the controller and the controller is set to the modulation. 
Now, as we look down on the bottom right, you can see that it's set to transform and not filter. If it was set to filter, it would just block this information. But because it's set to transform, what it's telling this input transformer to do is take pitch bend as it comes in and switch it over or transform it over to controller CC1. There's nothing to apply it to. It's just an automatic operation that's going to happen on this track. As I start to play the track now, instead of hitting my modulation wheel, I'm going to start moving the pitch bend wheel. Now I'm moving the pitch bend wheel, and the pitch bend is sending modulation. So in real time, it is taking anything that's coming from the pitch bend wheel and switching it over to modulation information. Let's say I want to control something else here. As I look down my list, I can see that I have the option for expression, which is controller 11. So let's say I'm going to go back to my modulation wheel. Instead of having it go out to controller 1, which is modulation, I want to change that controller to controller 11 to control the expression. So if I go back to my preset as it is right here, and I start from the top, and I say instead of pitch bend, I'm going to move this down to the controller, and I'm going to mimic what I saw here on the bottom by adding another filter line in here. Change the first part to value 1, and I'll change it to my controller 1 here. But now I'm going to go down into my transform area, and this time instead of it going to controller 1, I'm going to tell it to send it to controller 11. It automatically fills in controller 11 and says expression. I'm now moving the modulation wheel, but instead of it controlling the modulation, it's actually controlling the expression. Just like that, I can use whatever controllers I have and then reassign them to whatever controller I need. So have some fun with that. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link below this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link below and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we started looking at the Project Input Transformer. We took a basic overlook of everything. We saw how we can open and resize the windows, browse to different file locations, saw some presets from earlier versions, talked about the initial preset, talked about the input filter conditions, setting up different filter lines, setting up multiple filter lines, and then we went through some basic examples to see how it all works. And we will continue to examine all these different features and functions in Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.